All right, so we're going to come back to an integral we've looked at a couple of times now. Um, this, uh, this parabolic arc that we have here, we're trying to find the area underneath it. And, you know, we tried first with a single rectangle, not a very good approximation. We tried four rectangles, maybe it's a little bit better. Um, we have some idea that as we increase the number of rectangles, our approximation should get better, right? Um, then we kind of, you know, we went on maybe a little bit of a, not a tangent, but we had to kind of diverge a little bit and, and develop some formalism. We had to talk a bit about summation notation. We talked about this, this whole formalism of partitions. And, and at first glance, some of this, it will seem very, it seems very abstract and intimidating, right? You have all these, these indices and subscripts floating around. There's I's and N's and X's and deltas. And, and it seems like a lot at first glance. But if you take a step back, think about it for a second, it's, it's reasonably straightforward, right? All, all that we're ultimately doing is we're taking our big interval, we're chopping it up into a bunch of smaller intervals, of equal length, right? This I that we have here is just keeping track of which one of these intervals we're in, right? So it's just, it's just a sort of a, like a, a lookup mechanism that lets us say, okay, which one of these are we in? And what's useful is that we can express the endpoints in terms of this index i, right? So we have this formula. Uh, so this can be useful when we're coming to a problem like this where we want to start increasing the number of rectangles, right? And, and as the number of rectangles goes up, right, 16 rectangles, 20 rectangles, 100 rectangles, 1,000 rectangles, obviously we need to be able to do this efficiently, right, if we want to get anywhere. So let's think about how this works for 16. Okay, so for 16 rectangles, what's going on? Well, we can start with our delta x, that's easy enough. Right endpoint minus left, divide by n. So n in this case is 16, right? 16 is our number of rectangles. So we get 1 over 4, or if you like, 0 0.25, okay? So that means we can now we can generate our points, right? So we know that x1 is, is 0. We know that x2 is 0 0.25. We know that x3 is 0 0.5, and so on. We can generate all of those up to the last one is, is going to be x17, which is 4. Right? We always go with one more, right? Our intervals are going to be from from 0 to 0 0.25, from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, and so on, right? Um, so we generate those points. Uh, in general, xi, um, and actually, do we want xi? We want right endpoints, right? So if we look at sort of a generic interval here, right, the ith interval going from xi to xi plus 1, right? If we're doing right endpoints, we always want the index to be one bigger. So we want i plus 1 for a right endpoint, right? And so if you put i plus 1 into this, right, put a plus 1 there, well, then you're putting a plus 1 here. Uh, i plus 1 minus 1 just leaves you with i. So xi is x1, xi plus 1, rather, is x1 plus i times delta x. But x1 is 0. So this is 0 plus i times 0 0.25, okay? Which maybe we want, we want to write as simply i over 4, okay? So delta x is 1 over 4, xi, i over 4, okay? Now, next up, we want the height of the rectangles, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the right end point. We're going to go up get the height of the rectangle off the graph, right? right? So these heights that we have here, right, that's f of x2, f of x3, right? In general, for, for a given rectangle, we're going to calculate the height at f of x i plus 1. Okay, so that's the next step. What's f of xi plus 1? Well, that's f of 
i over 4. Okay, so that's 4 times i over 4 minus i over 4 squared. Okay, so we can write this as i minus 1 over 16i squared. Okay, not so bad. Um, now, because we want to do this for a thousand rectangles, we might want to try to keep track of, hey, where, you know, um, where is that 16 coming in, right? Because we want to replace it by a thousand. Um, and in fact, really, the only thing we got to kind of control for here is, is that we have xi plus 1 is, is still going to be i times delta x, right? The only thing that changes going from 16 rectangles to 1,000 rectangles is delta x, right? For 1,000 rectangles, delta x is going to be uh, 4 over 1,000, right? So, um, which is 1 over 250. Um, or, or if you like, uh, I think it's about 0 0.04, okay? So maybe, maybe you want to write this in terms of delta x. So really what we have here is, is it's um, 4i delta x minus i squared times delta x squared. Okay? All right. So now we say, well, what's this? You know, we're approximating the integral, right? So the area, right, or the integral, let's do it that way. The integral, 4x minus x squared dx, is approximately the sum i going from 1 to 16, f of x i plus 1 times delta x. So we multiply everything by delta x here, and we use summation properties. So what we're going to get is the first sum, well, let's write it all out. So 1 to 16, so we have 4i delta x times another delta x from this one, so delta x squared, minus i squared times delta x cubed. Okay? So summation notation says that's 4 times delta x squared times the sum i going from 1 to 16 of i minus delta x cubed times the sum i going from 1 to 16 of i squared, right? Remember that we can bring out anything that doesn't depend on i. Okay, uh, so the last thing is to remember that we have these summation formulas, right? Uh, remember that the, the sum i going from 1 to n of i is n times n plus 1 over 2. And for i squared, it's n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay, so we plug that in, right? So we have 4 times, well, let's put it in. It's going to be 4 over 4 squared, okay, times 16 times 17 over 2. And then we subtract off 1 over 4 cubed. And we put in this formula, which is going to be 16 times 17 times 33 over 6, and if you work that all out, you get 10.625 as your approximation, okay? Now, I'll stop here because this video is getting a little bit long, but let's say you wanted to do 1,000 rectangles. Do it all over again. What do you have to change? Well, 16 becomes 1,000. That's the only thing that you change here and here. That's a thousand. Still the only thing that you change here and here. When we get to this step, okay, that four becomes 250, 
right? And then instead of 16 and 17, you're going to have 1,000 and 1,000 and 1. 1,000, 1,000 and 1, 2,000 and 1, right? So you put those numbers in, you calculate, and you see what you get. And I think you get about 10.666 or something like that for that one. You can, you can check and see what you get for that, right? You get a pretty similar number, right? So this is why we bother with all this, this terminology, this notation. It's, it's that it lets us kind of do these calculations in a little bit simpler way, right? Um, up until here, the number of rectangles didn't actually matter, right? The calculation was the same. It was independent of the number of rectangles. We just had to put in the number at the end, right? 